Tesla acquires Highbar Systems. This may not be a blockbuster financial deal, but this one has massive implications if you're a long-term Tesla investor or fan. Currently, Tesla has one major problem, and that's their battery production rate. They can't make enough batteries fast enough to fulfill their vehicle and energy storage demand. Elon has said on numerous occasions that battery cell production is the primary limiting factor for Tesla's growth across all sectors. If Model 3 production is limited, you can imagine the issues that will arise when Model Y, Tesla Semi, the next-gen Roadster, and Cybertruck are due to come online. Not to mention the massive utility-scale projects that will hit the balance sheet when Tesla has the battery supply to fulfill the demand. A good problem to have, but a problem nonetheless. Let most of the masses and these so-called financial analysts miss the mark while they attempt to predict delivery numbers in the short term while we focus on the facts and the heartbeat of what's driving Tesla's entire business model, the battery tech and production capacity. I've also seen a number of Tesla influencers saying that Panasonic is getting the ax in 2020. I'm eager to talk about this. In October of 2019, in lobbyist registration documents filed with the government of Ontario, Tesla said its first objective was to quote, provide input and make recommendations to the government and its agencies regarding policies, programs, regulations, and decisions that impact the demand for the adoption of solar energy, battery energy storage, and related infrastructure. Enter Highbar Systems. Founded in 1974, Highbar has been a privately owned Canadian-based company in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Their primary focus has been on the design, development, and manufacturing of precision dispensing pumps for industrial automated liquid dispensing applications. They're a leader in the precision making of small cell batteries through a highly automated pump injection system. They integrate their pumps into filling systems and manufacture turnkey battery systems for their customers. They've also established subsidiary operations in China, the US, and Germany. Highbar China is a wholly foreign-owned enterprise referred to as WFOE, established under Chinese law in 2003. Highbar is world-renowned for their pumps and filling systems. Highbar is already a leader in the equipment for the Chinese battery industry. Highbar focuses a great deal on the automation, this is key, of filling systems, pumps, and fillers that are customized for the companies they work with. Over 90% of Highbar's revenues are based on global export sales. Their revenue breakdown has been 39% in the US, 37% in China, and only 3.9% in Canada. The primary industry Highbar serves does fluctuate from year to year based on industry trends, but on a normalized basis, 30% of their business is already serving the battery industry. This number should approach 100% now that they're owned by Tesla, unless of course these industries are continually served by Highbar and the profit numbers just hit Tesla's bottom line. I don't think this outcome is likely as we know Tesla's focus on transitioning the world to sustainable energy far more than they are on the bottom line numbers at this stage. At the heart of Highbar Systems Operations was their engineering team that used state-of-the-art 3D modeling with 3D mechanical simulations. They're also full fully vertically integrated, sound familiar? Which means they can produce virtually any part required for their systems in-house. They're a world leader in the development of battery manufacturing tech and are well known for their high-speed integrated battery assembly lines with over 40 years of experience. They have significant investments in R&D, intellectual property, patented technical know-how, and manufacturing capabilities for automated production of lithium ion and other batteries. Their pumps have earned respect and recognition worldwide for their accuracy, reliability, and versatility utility. They specialize in custom automated solutions for their customers. Highbar has been frequently recognized as a global leader and one of the top private companies in Canada. They've been named one of Canada's best managed companies for four years in a row. They were named the best international business with over 97% of their business coming from international markets. They were honored by the Toronto Board of Trade with a Global Trade Catalyst Award and have been named one of Canada's top 10 private companies numerous times. They were awarded $2 million in April of 19 to use for developing high efficiency lithium ion manufacturing systems specifically for energy storage. Their CEO is Ian McCall, who is now the senior director of engineering at Tesla, and he has worked at Highbar for the past 34 years. Ian started at Highbar in 86 as a mechanical design specialist and progressed his way up the ranks of the company, eventually taking over as CEO in 2006. He oversaw the restructuring of Highbar Systems ownership from the founder's family with a management buyout that resulted 
in Haibar becoming 100% employee owned. Ian has traveled extensively to China on a monthly basis since the 1980s and has been an advocate of Canadian companies doing business in China. Here's Ian on what's primarily led to Haibar's growth. Fundamentally, entering new markets was the foundation of Haibar's growth. 95% of what Haibar designs and manufactures here in Richmond Hill is export to uh, global markets. Innovation is really sort of a quintessential part of what we do. The reason why we can sell our automated systems to these consumer producing companies is because we have leading edge technology. Our awesome team of highly skilled engineers, tool makers, machinists, and uh, support staff gives us the engine to, to build the growth in the company. So I have to say, the average tenure of a high bar employee is over 14 years. So that says something. High bars focus on innovation, automated manufacturing specifically for lithium-ion cells, and trust with the Chinese markets will fit incredibly well with the fabric of Tesla. Simply put, Hybar will have more to do with the battery manufacturing side than it will the actual battery composition advancements, which is where Maxwell should come in. Tesla is interested in improving the yield and rate of battery cell production, and Hybar is a prime candidate for Tesla to integrate into their operations. High precision dispensing is key to eliminating waste and improving ratios. Clearly, Tesla still needs to do all that it can to bring down manufacturing costs that will result in better profit and loss numbers or lower priced vehicles that can speed up the mass market adoption rate. Here's the deal. As you saw, Tesla stated their primary focus will be in regard to energy storage solutions. Given this statement, it's possible that this acquisition was more for Tesla's energy business than it was for their cars, which no one's really talking about. Of course, I think a lot of this technology can and will also translate over to their EV battery production but this hasn't been what Tesla has stated publicly. Everyone has seemingly jumped to conclusions that the high bar acquisition means Tesla will be quickly cutting ties with Panasonic and making their own batteries. Here's why I don't think that's the case, yet. As we know, Tesla's current bottleneck is battery supply. Instead of immediately cutting ties with Panasonic, why wouldn't they keep those manufacturing lines operational for a while until they scale their own battery manufacturing process? That way, they're only adding more production capacity without reducing it at all for any period of time. For Tesla to just quit the Panasonic production, which has provided batteries for almost 1 million cars, that relationship would have to be incredibly terrible or the cost savings of making their own batteries would have to be drastic. Although there were some negative Panasonic headlines over the past few months, on the Q4 call just last night, Elon praised Panasonic and said their relationship has been great overall. So yes, in the future, I believe at some point, Tesla would love to cut ties with Panasonic to become 100% vertically integrated, but it could be years later before their in-house battery manufacturing is scaled to meet or exceed the battery production that would need to be replaced without Panasonic in the picture. Additionally, if Tesla starts producing their own batteries while maintaining a partnership with Panasonic, they'll have far more leverage in contract negotiations since they aren't as reliant on Panasonic, LG, or CATL. Tesla making their own batteries is no small feat and is not something that, in my opinion, can be implemented and scaled effectively on the timeline that many are expecting, even for Tesla. From supply chain logistics, manufacturing line setups, staffing, and many other factors, it will take time to transition 100% of battery production in-house. Sandy Monroe spoke with Sean Mitchell about this very topic recently. Um, so do you think a, a key, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick this question over to Mark, uh, since it's sort of battery related, do you think that in order to be competitive with Tesla's range, you have to build your own, create your own chemistry, produce your own battery cells? That would be a 10-year project. Okay. So, you know, there are going to be leaders in the battery industry, and the a lot of the electrochemistries are under patents. They're going to have to be licensed. Whoever comes out on top is probably going to win. But just due to the sheer volume of batteries that are going to be needed in the next five years, you you know you basically have three or four mm -hmm. major battery companies that are out there. You've got Panasonic. You've got. Samsung, you've got LG, and you've got CATL out of China, and those are the big four. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is going to be trying to find a niche in there. Uh, probably the outlier is BYD. They make their own batteries and they make their own cars. 
So they're in a position, if they can get everything put together, to really kind of lead because I can make the car, I make the batteries, I've mm -hmm. got everything in house, but are we going to do it well? That would be the question. There, there's I mean, at the end of the day, if you're going to see somebody come up with something new, it's going to be a solid state battery. Okay. Or it's going to be some way of controlling lightning. The, yeah. the, uh, the supercapacitors. You know, supercapacitors. Yeah. Right. Um, that's, that's, where, that's where, if I was going to put money in uh, advanced research, that's where I'd stick it. I wouldn't... The next I'm, iteration of it. energy. Like, like yeah. Mark just said, why would I ever want to try and figure out how to do new chemistry as opposed to uh, as opposed to Panasonic or something? It's ridiculous. You, you can't compete with these guys. They've been doing it forever. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't look at that. I'd be looking at what can we do that would be a step change, and uh, I'm uh, and I'm positive that Elon Musk is also looking at that. He's got to be. I mean. Um, He's often been fond of supercapacitors for many, many years, and yeah. so that's one of the reasons why I think the Maxwell acquisition is quite interesting because yeah. it's not just the, the the dry the dry battery electrode tech, but the supercaps is something that Maxwell has done since yeah. they first started the company in the eighties or nineties. The dry battery electrode technology is game changing, I think, if it comes to pass. Now, if this sounded like a foreign language, these guys are saying that it would make far more sense for Tesla to make their own batteries only if it was going to be a next generation type tech, which Sandy thinks will be a solid state battery. What do you guys think? How soon will we see the next gen battery tech from Tesla? Let me know what you think in the comments. All right, guys, so came outside for a second to get some fresh air. Been inside most of the day researching and editing. But with regards to the giveaway, so what happened with the last video, I posted it Thursday, it did pretty well. Got up to like 50,000 views pretty quick and then it was taken down. I went, <laughs> I went back on my YouTube account a couple days later. The video was gone. Long story short, there was a copyright claim that somebody submitted for a quick like 15 second clip of one of the Model y, y sightings and so I had to reach out to him. to get that light back on. So I reached out to this guy and uh, he ended up reversing the claim. We worked something out and he was he was pretty cool about it. So the video is now back up. But with that being said, the video is down pretty much the entire last week. So my wife and I didn't have a chance to go through all of the comments yet. So what we're gonna do is sometime, hopefully over the weekend, we're gonna sit down and go through the comments and then our next video, which will probably be next Thursday, um, we'll have an updated list of entrants. And of course, if you comment on this video, you will also have more chances to be chosen. We're gonna go through these comments as well. Um, and I'll put the video of the uh, Tesla sign that we're giving away up on the screen. But uh, as always guys, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I uh, look forward to the next video.